all this is the scar city studios youtube channel please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe it's a year after the death of Yasser Yacoub at the hands of armed police after meeting Meggie Khan at Café Diakbar. Following the murder of Amriz Iqbal Major on October the 1st in Bradford, just the day after Major returned from Dubai on Sanford Road, the police now want Meggie Khan and Tony Grant for the murder and attempted murder of his friend, Mr. Ahmed. Khan, known as Meggie, was apprehended in Chester Street, Oldham on October the 18th last year. An officer from Greater Manchester Police told Bradford Court that Khan was arrested at 20 to 8. His co-accused Tony Grant, a HGV truck driver, was arrested at a retail park in Bradford on October the 5th. In April 2019, they went on trial. It was a foggy morning in Bradford and there was a media blackout on the police convoy to court for fears and of attempted breakout. The locals knew this prison van was a special occasion. It was the most secure prison case Bradford had ever had. Armed police at the door and in convoys. The 14 day trial revealed the lengths the police went to to jail one of Bradford's most notorious criminals. Throughout the investigation, Meggie did eight no comment interviews and was adamant he would beat the case. He said he wasn't the driver and despite the mounting evidence, including the intricate way the police pieced together CCTV from surrounding streets to navigate their journey after the murder. The way they connected Khan, Grant and Ishmael's phone records during the attempt arson and armed robbery by Ishmael in an attempt to recover or destroy the surveillance tapes of the footage of Khan purchasing the petrol. The full footage of the attempted robbery is available on our website. A link is in the description. It shows two males fighting with a shopkeeper and the shopkeeper fighting back and actually managing to fend them both off with just a stool. In my opinion, the men that were sent to do this job were not fully committed, maybe doing it for other reasons that they didn't have a choice. In the second attempt, Ishmael actually used his own car, which was identified by witnesses at a pub across the road. He received 17 years for perverting the course of justice and arson. And at no point during the trial did he ever try to incriminate Meggie Khan for anything. The main point of the trial was to try and ascertain who was the driver, who was in the driver's seat at the moment the car hit Amriz that fateful day in October. And one one of the damning pieces of evidence the media didn't really speak about I found was actually the secret recordings the the police had used when they decided to bug all of Meggie and Grant's visitors and phone calls in prison while it was on remand. There was a total of 54 hours of recordings and I will give, read some of them to give you an insight into Tony Grant's mentality at the time and maybe try and find an understanding as to why Meggie did what he did on October the 3rd. It is revealed in court that Meggie's native tongue is Pashto from the Patan tribe at the border of Pakistan. They make up only 5% of the Bradford Asian community, yet Tony Grant's recordings are played in the court. These are the transcripts of his visitor that he had. It reads... I hear it every day, even in here, referring to prison. Why isn't he doing the right thing, referring to Meggie? I don't get it. I don't get why he made that decision to do that, referring to the murder of Amriz. Even after it happened, he didn't bat an eyelid. That statement there on its own is very incriminating. It insinuates that Meggie is capable of doing it and has done something along them lines previously. His next statement, it's all dodgy, sketchy, blah, blah, blah. I get it, nothing to do with me though. They're getting me into a predicament. He tells another visitor on a different recording. They're going to say to me, the driver in the car, why won't you name him? Because I'll get my fucking legs broken, he says. So that statement there insinuates that Meggie still holds power. Even though he's in custody on a murder charge, he still has an influence to where he could get somebody's legs broken. He then talks about going to the farm where they got rid of the car, the Kia Sedona. That's what I'm saying. He's F. I'm sticking to the truth, he tells his visitor. Then I can't say, I can't name anyone. I'm not going down that route. He said, I don't 
don't give a crap. I'm not changing my number. Why should I have? I didn't do anything. When we got to where we was going, I just wanted to go home. And then somebody said, I better follow them, he says. He's the brains. Everything is aiming at him, referring to Meggie. He's the brains. He's the main man. He says, whatever I've done, he's already done first and tried it. That's what I'm saying. Petrol station robbery, Grant says. I didn't have nothing to do with that. It's not something I'm going to admit to, says Grant. If they say to me in court, who was the driver? What do I say? Grant asks another visitor. There will be snitches out there, Tony, says another visitor. Yeah, but they don't know nothing, so what can they snitch on? He tells that visitor. From that point, the driver, and only the driver, has made the decision to run him over. So how can anyone else be guilty? It was not me driving the car, Grant says. He continues. But that night, somebody t tried to blow the petrol station up. And the next day, somebody tried to rob the petrol station to get the CCTV. How many was in the car, said the visitor. Six, he says. Really big car then. Seven seater. He replies, basically, he says, they run him over, done him in, got back in the car, he says, of the rear passenger. So they're saying, I'm the passenger. That's what they're trying to say. He describes in detail the CCTV footage of the car hitting Amri's Iqbal and Adnan Ahmed. Grant here is telling his visitor about the CCTV and AMPR evidence against him, including the CCTV footage at the petrol station. It doesn't take a genius to work out that wasn't meant to happen grant says he says whoever has gone there has gone there by chance to give him a slap so that for me was quite a, an important thing he says that there was never a plan to kill amris i don't think he was thinking i don't so out of everyone he had to go in your car asked the visitor i know that he says that's why i'm here after a break in the recording grant says they're saying to me hopefully he will put his hands up get 15 he tells the visitor let's just have a driver around yeah not going to do now that was it see if it was him i'm on the phone just chilling out grant says and everything i think they knew what was happening referring to the other people that they said there was with i didn't and i mean by unfortunate chance we crossed that path of amri's and the psychopath was there referring to meggy khan and that gives you an insight into what Tony Grant thought of Meggie Khan. It's effed, he says. I'm crapping myself. Proper effed, he tells the visitor. He talks about hiding in the bushes and deleting all his texts from his phone when he was arrested by the police. There was reports of a man getting out the car and hitting Iqbal in the head with a crowbar. Grant says that was bullshit in the secret recording. He says somebody went over and prodded him with a stick to see if he was okay. They have to put someone in the driver's seat at the time it happened doesn't matter about an hour after when there was at the petrol station they put eight interviews to Meggie he says and he no commented all of them in Meggie's secret recordings of his visits and his phone calls they, some of them was read out in court and it went like this listen he says I know I wasn't there right says Khan the lads who dropped him off need to step up say we did drop him off it wasn't him he says you were sinning it said the visitor putting petrol in the car driving around Khan's visitor says so what you do you say yeah i put the petrol in do you think i'd be that stupid as to go and kill him after there's no dna there's no witnesses there's no cell site says Khan you've got an alibi and your mom they're not gonna lie so that's that the only thing is putting is putting the petrol in the car and the cause of it is when his head hit the tree that's what Khan says. And that's quite a damning bit of evidence because it shows the casualness he's talking, Major's death and referring to, to him. So to the jury, that would definitely not go in his favour. It's just my luck, and it, says Khan. That other guy that got hit got a few grazes and they're trying to do him for attempted murder. My solicitor has proven the car was only going at 15 to 20 miles an hour. End of the day, I got dropped off, but I can't say who I got dropped off by, says Khan because you weren't there how can i put my hand up for something i didn't do he says there's no other evidence to show that they've been assaulted says khan he and his visitor go on to discuss the quality of the cctv footage which khan says cannot show he's in the car they they then talk about the difficulty in proving intent to kill someone by hitting them with a car they got two alibis to say i was at home respectable people khan tells his visitor the guy that got hit the camera shows the guy getting hit the car stopping he continues he's visitor says that the five men seen getting out of the car will probably be done for manslaughter what it is yeah at the end of the day they looked at the camera
cameras and everything. Yeah, says Khan. The only thing they got me on is putting petrol in the car. He later repeats, now that's not enough to convict me on something an hour before. Khan tells his visitor about the AMPR and the camera evidence the police have told him they have against him. The cell site that's picked me up at my mum's. Obviously, I went home, he says. It's a serious one, this says the visitor. Only thing is, they've got me putting petrol in the car. He then tells him again, even though he doesn't even know he's being recorded. Uh, Tony Grant, on the other hand, made mistakes. Khan was being kept in HMP Hull at this time and Grant was at HMP Leeds. And these were the extreme tactics the police used to gain information information to make Meggy look bad in court and we definitely know that Major was definitely not scared of Meggy. An example of Major in action is available on the website a small f clip of a fight that he had in a garage. I found this footage online and he is a father of three and he did not deserve to die that day but he also was involved in some degree and also angered Meggy enough for him to risk his freedom. Nadim Khan wasn't mentioned in the news following the trial. He was cleared of perverting the course of justice relating to the Kia Sedona and changing the insurance papers. He was cleared on the 13th day of the trial and the only one who was actually cleared. He was dragged into the situation where Meggy phoned him after the death of Imraz. Only months earlier, in the last known footage of Meggy Khan free, he is seen in a Leeds shisha bar. Inspired by the Great Gatsby 1920s theme, it's called billions and several months after the death of Yasser Yacoub on the motorway and several months before the murder of Major looking engaged in conversation in glamorous surroundings and no idea of the events that was going to unfold in the future the accusation circling at this point following Yasser's trial clearly wasn't affecting him or his activities. Meggie is said to be extremely serious criminal who led a charmed life and is involved in several gang fights. That was the problem with Meggy. He made people not want to talk. Going back to 2009, over 10 years earlier, two brothers, James and Christopher Fletcher, they was accused in a plot to kill Mohammed Nasir Meggy Khan in retribution for him trying to assassinate James. The prosecution alleged the Fletcher brothers conspired with a close friend, Raymond Daniels, to murder Meggy Khan and a gunman was hired. The attempt in August 2007 failed. Meggy was shot in the abdomen at his girlfriend's home in Dubkiln Road, Bingley. He suffered a perforated colon and a a lacerated liver. The suspect from the Cutler Heights area of Bradford was arrested last night in a pre-planned operation by the firearms unit. His arrest came after a 29 year old man at the time was shot in the stomach as he walked to his car in Bingley Canal at around 10 p.m. on Monday. His assailant lay in wait. Miraculously, Meggy survived being shot at a further six times after having been shot in the stomach. He managed to get away and fled down Dobkiln Lane. Bradford Crown Court heard that James Fletcher was shot in June in the leg of 2007. The jury was told two days later a detective was contacted by Sean Cutler who was the daughter of James's girlfriend. He told the officer Fletcher had told him an Asian male called Raz had put a gun to his head in 2007 sent by Meggy Khan. He pulled the trigger but the gun jammed. Fletcher had thumped him and the gun went off and shot him in the leg. He managed to get away saving his life but from that day him and his brother conspired to kill Meggy Khan. The prosecution said a Mercedes and a Nissan Nirvana was stolen to order and given false plate. He claimed it was used by the conspirators to do reconnaissance on Meggy Khan. They spent hours trying to find out locations that Meggy was going, actively plan an assassination. When these cars were recovered by police, they contained cans of petrol and the prosecution said these were the lengths the defendants were willing to go to. Both denied conspiracy to murder, but was found guilty of firearm offences. So this showed the lengths that people went to to get rid of Meggy. But at no point was there any insinuation that Meggy had written any statements. Following the death of Yasser, one of the main sources of accusations of Meggy being a snitch was a, a website called Mera Merp. Com. It covers various news subjects, mainly covering Asian community subjects and topics that affect the Asian community. But in this one subject and story, it did show extreme bias. The first and most hardest piece of evidence, for example, is where is the accusation that Meggy Khan snitched on Zulfi Khan Ali 
back in 2012, they have a printed image of a pre-interview disclosure where it says that on the date, a detective constable called Dita was to meet Zulfi Carr in HMP Strange Ways. Very odd that this happened in prison. It claims that there was threats to kill Mohammed Khan, AKA Meggie. But what I find strange initially is just the fact that of course documents can be forged. That must be the first thing we assume when we look at any sort of information or evidence. Secondly, in 2011, if my records are correct, Meggie Khan was actually in prison for an affray. He received 30 months. So for 15 months minimum, he would have been in prison. So during this time, he would have been in prison too so what i don't understand the context of how this happened i've never heard of two men being in prison and send and being spoken to by the police over threats to kill that, that is something i would definitely like to learn more about because it doesn't make sense it may be one of the only bits of evidence that we can't explain but if we look at the credibility of the source that it comes from if you read later on in this website you will find more information where they talk very biasly about Meggie Khan and his family and they refer to his nephew who was Kwasim Rahman who died from a, a cocaine overdose and they accuse him of robbing people, grassing on people and also being a pimp with no actual real evidence. This one I would like to highlight. It is a club that Meggie was meant to have had a fight in with a man called Iflak. It happened outside, it was in the Leeds area and this merapmerper.com says I was in the line of the club where Meggie got hit by Iflak. Iflak knocked him out. Meggie was asleep on the floor like his mom just came out and stuck her breast in his mouth and read him a bedtime story. He disappeared out of the line. Iflak hit him so hard. And the reason why this surprised me is that due to extra research, I found the actual incident, the footage of the fight that occurred that evening. And the story and the facts are very different to what this, to what this website documented. What you can actually see in the full footage is again available like all the other violent footage on our website. Link will be in the description. It shows Iflak approaching Meggie outside a club and actually judicing him from behind punching him in the back of the head and to some people this may have knocked you off guard or maybe even potentially knocked them out flat as they insinuate on the website in Merrimapur but what happened was Meggie came back fighting ferociously he viciously beat Iflak who you can clearly identify on the footage on the floor hitting him up to a dozen times surrounded by many witnesses and yet nobody actually said what had happened correctly. Both of these men that was involved that was Meggie's enemies separately been jailed for shotgun offences. Zulfi Carr was jailed in 2014 for a conspiracy to supply a shotgun and Iflak was also jailed not long after for selling shotguns as well. In the Birmingham area he sold it to a man that was conspiring to kill somebody and that's how you can identify that Iflak is the man in the footage. And this was taken in 2012. So it tells a very different story to the one that has been going around. I didn't set out to prove that Meggie Khan hadn't snitched in any of these cases. And of course, the statement is still a little bit open. It doesn't make sense. And there is a lot of things that don't add up. Because stories like this will just become urban legends if you don't talk them through and find out what the real facts are. And as you can see with that example of what that website has done, they have approached something from a biased perspective and could maybe influence people's opinions of the future so i'd love to hear what people's comments are on this and don't forget to go and check out the, all the footage on the website please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i'm sure there's more to come in the story of meggie khan